You know, we have so many incredible stories at the MUHC, but my personal favorite is that of Drs. Richard and Sylvia Cruz, who have dedicated their lifetime of service to the Royal Victoria Hospital and to the MUHC. But it's their passion for research and for teaching that led our foundation to launch a $10 million fundraising campaign to name the only amphitheater in the new hospital in their honor. This space will not only honor their legacy, an incredible legacy, but it will hopefully inspire a new generation of researchers and clinicians and thinkers to advance healthcare for Montreal and for the world. So you both met at Columbia while you were students there? In, in first year. Yeah. First year. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe the first day you both met or that, those first few moments you met? No, oh, really? no. I, I mean, I, we went to class with all the rest of everyone else. Yeah, you know, there were 120 of us. Uh, there we were, were never partners. I, I was a Robinson and he was a Cruz. And when you seek people alphabetically, you don't get very close. <laughs> when you see them around, um, they're always together. They're, they're always um, sort of... Um, building on each other's thoughts and, and collaborating together and it's, it's pretty incredible to, to see um, a couple like that working together after so many years, um, still side by side, it's very inspirational. He was very handsome, wonderful yeah. eyebrows. No question about, <laughs> about sex appeal, I mean, I, I, look at, we were teenagers, just being out of teenage, it was normal. By Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving in November. He asked me to a horse show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I went. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we started dating, and I proposed in February in a caleche in Central Park after a lot of wine at a very good restaurant. She said, but you haven't met my family. In a, in a quite a negative way, as a matter of fact. Yeah. I didn't think it was negative, it was the truth. Yeah. <laughs> my mother in particular, I think, was quite pleased that I was going into medicine. When we announced that we wished to get married, uh, she came on and spoke to the then Dean of Students, trying to have him discourage us from doing this. <laughs> she thought it was important enough to save my career. And uh, he told her, Mrs. Robinson, we find that when people who wish to get married get married, they do far better. <laughs> and so she gave in. I had close friends in Montreal because of McGill's reputation and uh, we came in uh, in the fall of our final year of medical school and looked at an internship at the Vic and were accepted and we knew we could uh, be in the same hospital. So that's uh, how we first came to Montreal. And we were from outside of Montreal, so we didn't, you know, we didn't, hadn't grown up here. So we, and didn't have and, family here. And didn't have family. when we thought about where we were going to spend the rest of our lives, whether we were going to uh, take jobs elsewhere because there were, there were job offers. Uh, the, the professional life was important, but so, so were, were our friends. Uh, I, I think and I think that's why we say That certainly was part, is good. part of reason. the reason. Yeah, part of the reason. Uh, friends are pretty precious. When one thinks that Dick and Sylvia came to the Royal Victorian Hospital in the 1950s as young interns, and do the arithmetic, you'll realize that the two of them have a combined association and contributions to the VEC and McGill, and now the MUHC, for well over a century. That's quite a remarkable achievement, and quite a remarkable number. McGill was obviously important, but the hospital was the center of our lives. Yes. Both the hospital and the university uh, gave us opportunities to do things that we absolutely never dreamt we were capable of doing. I mean, it, it was a hugely uh, supportive environment. I felt supported through the, our entire professional careers, and we still are feeling supported in the Center for Medical Education. Yeah, it's, it's still there. I mean, McGill is still allowing us to work, for heaven's sake. Well, Dr. Cruz always impressed me by uh, how wise he is, how, how he was always listening, asking questions, and asking what exactly we wanted to be doing. The cruises have really had a huge impact in shifting the culture of medicine and, and taking professionalism extremely seriously. They've had a huge impact on how physicians are trained to, to really think of this as, as a very core part of, of the identity and, and the, the job, really, of being a physician. 
developing those skills, practicing those skills, and valuing those skills as central to what it means to be a medical professional. But the fact that we've been able to run parallel careers with different levels of demand for each other's time uh, throughout all these years. Different levels of authority over each other. Yeah. I mean, I suspended his privileges once, and uh, <laughs> other people are, couldn't understand how I could possibly do that. I mean, he's your husband. I said, he didn't sign his charts. <laughs> you know? I think we all had the feeling that we cherished the accomplishments of our colleagues. Uh, and both within our own departments and, and in other departments. It's the profession of medicine that uh, has given me the most pride. On my tombstone, I just like it to be written, he was a good doctor. You both are, you know, an inspiration to the next generation of medical students and professionals. What kind of message would you want to give them? Oh, I think that's, mine's very simple. I just hope you have as much fun as we did. We are so fortunate. We've just had such satisfying lives. <laughs>